So on January the 4th, my father started right down here and he walked up Mill Street. Coming to the library to register for the very first day here at Auburn University. Of course, this area looked a lot different back then, but the feeling is still the same. He's the kind of person that if he's going to do something, he's going to do it. From what he told me, they all laughed when they were in school and called Auburn the Cal College. So when Fred Gray came to him and asked him to think about integrating Auburn, he says, uh, well, I don't want to go to a Cal College, Fred. So then Fred says, well, we need you. And, and Fred was actually the legal part of the NAACP, the local chapter, so they were trying to go around and get all the schools in the South integrated. So my dad said about on the third time he asked him, he said, well, listen, I'll go talk to my wife and see what she thinks about it. And at that point is when she said, well, if you want to do it, I'm with you. You can do it. And that's when they decided, hey, we're going to do this thing. Now, that was in 1962. You hooked a picture to your uh, application, and the, the, the university wasn't having any of it. Um, he was African American, and they weren't going to let him in. George Wallace may have said in December or November of 1963 that he was not going to stand in Auburn schoolhouse door, but there were plenty of people that threatened the budget of Auburn University, both in the legislature and I'm sure in the executive office um, at the state, um, who could do great damage to Auburn if they didn't resist to the best of their ability. It took two years of, you know, in court, out of court, uh, this judge, that judge, and the process. And it wasn't until January the 4th, 1964, when he was admitted. It proved to him something that he already knew, and that was that whatever he set his mind to, he could achieve. I think the, the, the man was greater than his legend. I thought he was famous. I thought he was more famous than <laughs> what I would see every day. <laughs> but he always worked for the person who he thought was not sponsored, that nobody considered. He was very interesting in the way he would talk about uh, helping others. I, I think he really wanted to help other people, you know, more so than himself. He's a trailblazer. What he's done for the university and paved the steps for students like me in this day and age, he really exemplifies the Auburn Creed, uh, especially the line that says, a spirit that is not afraid. You know, it not only takes courage, but uh, some kind of moral fortitude to do what he did back then and to really, in a place of isolation, I can only imagine what he went through back then and I'm, I'm really grateful that he took the steps back then to be where we are now. see the look on his face, uh, I think he was totally elated. I think this is something that he had wanted to do for years and years. Naturally, I'm, I'm proud to be a son, uh, to carry the name, and, and for you guys to even think enough of him to say, hey, we want to name a scholarship after your father. So that, that's, that's great. And he would think that it was yet another contribution, a final contribution that he could make to that sense of justness that he had all, always through his life tried to achieve for African Americans and that we recognize him for as uh, uh, desegregating Auburn University. One man desegregating Auburn University. Uh, this is a, a very joyous occasion, beautiful day. Um, I'm fighting the tears back, but it, it, it is great for you guys to honor uh, my father the way you have. We really appreciate that. What do you think your, your dad would say uh, to a recipient of, of this scholarship? What would he, what would he tell them uh, to do with this opportunity? Don't waste it. Do, do your, your best. best. Be honest. Treat everybody with respect. 
They don't treat you with respect. You tell them you demand the respect. I don't associate with them.